A severe solar storm could supercharge auroras across the United States. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Association is warning that it could also have an impact on power grids. Here to impact, or rather to talk about this geomagnetic storm, is Bob Steenberg, a space scientist with NOAA Space Weather Prediction Center. Okay, sir, a lot of big words here that we don't know the meanings <laughs> to. So let's see if we can get this in the plainest, simplest, clearest English possible. What are we talking about? What are we going to see? Okay. In the simplest terms, uh, the sun spits off part of its atmosphere, and that chunk comes to Earth sometimes, and when it interacts with Earth's magnetic field, it produces a geomagnetic storm. And the bigger the storm is, the farther south the northern lights will, will move, and similarly in the southern hemisphere, they move towards, in both cases, towards the equator. So we're looking at the consequences of a, an eruption on the sun arriving at Earth. So are we talking just like brighter colors? What are we talking about here? So what we're saying here, normally the aurora lives up in the polar regions. You know, you go up to the Yukon to see it. When we have these large storms, it forces that further south towards more populated areas. And the stronger the storm, you, you get more variety in the colors and things. So you can see some pretty spectacular displays uh, when you have large storms like this. So I must say that's beautifully and clearly explained. One more <laughs> thing here, though. Is it going to fall any further? Is there any kind of fallout toward the surface of the Earth? I mean, should we be concerned about something like that? No. What, well, it's interesting because that's actually the mechanism. You've got particles that are falling into Earth's atmosphere, and they're interacting with other chemical constituents there to make the aurora. So it is actually precipitation. Thing is, it all it all ends way before it gets to us. Good. So, <laughs> are, yeah. Exactly. So are we gonna like be feeling anything? Is technology gonna be affected? Are our bodies gonna react to this? Will <laughs> our cell phones What's work? gonna happen? <laughs> okay. Cell phones should work. Um, sometimes these disturbances can cause problems with navigation, so things like GPS. Uh, sometimes they can cause hiccups on power lines, but uh, we've worked really closely with the power industry and other industries to make sure that when these things happen, they're prepared and able to mitigate it. So our job is to let them know it's coming, tell them how big it's getting, and then they do the work to mitigate the impacts. Okay. Team well, effort. Yeah. What's the time frame one more time here? So we're looking at this storm wrapping up probably by tomorrow morning. So overnight, you may get a chance to see it there, uh, depending on how strong it, it continues into the nighttime. And uh, the key is you got to get away from the bright lights, though, which is, you know, not necessarily easy, depending on where you are. Yeah, and you need no cloud city. cover. Uh, so, yeah, it's, it's kind of tough there. So, uh, but the thing is, too, you can grab pictures with your cell phone camera sometimes. And if it's, if it's uh, good, even if you can't see it with your naked eye, the camera can pick it up. All right. Really cool. Rob Steenberg with NOAA. We really appreciate the insight. Thanks so much. It was my pleasure. Thank you both. All right. It's going to be exciting. So somebody who's supercharged about this. And another this. life. On the and edge another of your life. seat. You're ready to go yeah. here. Oh, okay. But I will say, he touched upon something really interesting when he said, the cell phones can pick up the colors you can't always see with your naked eye. Remember the last one that we had around here? People okay. were sending in these great mm -hmm. pictures, right. but then I was talking to people in the town. They said it didn't look like that outside, mm -hmm. but I still, man, it's on my bucket list. I want to see this. I went to Alaska this summer to hopefully see it. Stayed light for 24 <laughs> hours. So what are you going to do tonight? Oh, all right. I'm going to stay you know, up. You're going to be Let's up? talk about that. Pull oh, an all-nighter? Okay, remember the last one? He I pulled an all-nighter last, last night. I almost <laughs> drove to the Massachusetts border, and right. I, I missed it. So let's talk real clearly about right here. For those of us... <laughs> You don't remember that, Mo? I I'm do. driving forever. Came up empty. All right. Empty, absolutely. The best viewing time's here. If you want to give it a shot to see the northern lights, and man, do I want to see it. But the best viewing time, 8 p.m. to 2 a.m. i got to be real clear here because the last time we had a similar time frame like that, I thought, okay, I'm going to leave after the 11 o'clock news. I guess just get driving. Last time it turned out the best viewing ended up being sort of right in the middle. It was like... 10 p.m. to 11 p.m., maybe even 11.30, we saw the best. It could very well be the same this time, but that's your time frame. 8 p.m. to 2 a.m., best place to see it here in the tri-state, the Hudson Valley, northwestern New Jersey, maybe Litchfield County. Basically, the farther north you go, you're going to do better. You seek darkness. You just heard Rob saying that. Get to dark places, and you may have a shot at it. Right now, anything but dark outside. It's bright. It's beautiful. It's cool. It is 60 degrees outside.